One of the most important ingredients in a Texas sheet cake that makes it taste so good is cinnamon. And of course, the most important ingredient in a Coca-Cola sheet cake is our lovely Coca-Cola out of Atlanta, Georgia. And both of these cakes are so delicious. So I personally combine the two because I think it makes a cake that's just out of this world. You just cannot find a better chocolate cake recipe anywhere, y'all. Give this one a try over all my chocolate cakes and you're bound to make it again and again. Texas. All right, this cake is in our second cookbook, but it has not been on the website and we haven't made a video for it. This is a Texas sheet cake and the ever loved Coca-Cola sheet cake combined. So you're gonna love this recipe and you will find it now on the website and it's in the second cookbook. We're gonna get started. We are gonna start with dry ingredients. Um, whenever I'm using cocoa in anything, I do like to mix it into my dry ingredients just because it gets distributed evenly. So we're gonna start out with one and three quarter cups of sugar, five tablespoons of Hershey's cocoa, and two cups of self-rising flour. And of course, I am using white lily. There's one. And two. And now I just like to whisk this together. Now once we start mixing up the cake, we'll be adding the dry ingredients alternately with the wet ingredients. So just get you a little whisk and whisk away. Nothing's better to me than old Hershey's cocoa. That's what my mama used. What did your mama use? I don't know where you grew up. So if you grew up eating a different kind of cocoa, let us know. But we sure love our Hershey's and our white lily flour. And this is self-rising flour, so it does have the baking powder and salt already in it. If you don't have self-rising flour, then I suggest you use cake flour. And if you want to know how much salt and baking powder to add, Google it because I never use it, okay? One of the most important ingredients in a Texas sheet cake that makes it taste so good is cinnamon. And of course, the most important ingredient in a Coca-Cola sheet cake is our lovely Coca-Cola out of Atlanta, Georgia. And both of these cakes are so delicious. So I personally combine the two because I think it makes a cake that's just out of this world. And we're just gonna go ahead and add our wet ingredients in here. So we're gonna start, and let me tell you what I've got here. So we're gonna be using a cup of Coca-Cola, half cup of water, two eggs, a stick of butter melted, and a half cup of cooking oil. Quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Of course, you want some vanilla in there. And I can't remember if I told you a cup of cola, but I think I did. So we're just gonna start with our wet ingredients and we're gonna add them all in here. And then we're gonna open our Coca-Cola. This is our half cup of cooking oil, two eggs, half cup of water, a whole stick of butter melted, yummy yum, and I'm going to go ahead and start mixing that because that butter was kind of warm and my eggs are in there. All right, and now we're going to open our Coca-Cola and pour out one cup of Coke.
All right, we're gonna be using one cup of delicious Coca-Cola. I think I'll go ahead and grab my quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and put it into my flour right quick. And then we're gonna start adding this into our mixer along with our Coca-Cola and that's all there is to it, y'all. Simple dimple. this is a very thin cake batter I've still got more coke to put in it it's a super thin cake batter but it bakes up really pretty and last but not least let's not forget to put in our vanilla a 13 by 9 by 2 inch cake sheet pan this is a quarter sheet pan um, and you're going to spray it with some non-stick spray the best thing to use when you're baking period is aluminum so make sure you get you some aluminum baking pans for baking uh, brownies and cakes and muffins and things like that okay all right we're going to pour our delicious cake batter into our pan. If you've never seen a mixer like the one I'm using, they're super lightweight to pick up and move around the kitchen. And it's called a Bosch and it's made in Germany. Um, you can find the links on my website under shop now, then um, small appliances, okay? So, it is kind of pricey, but really right now the KitchenAid is just as much. It's very powerful and it's good at making bread as well. Chris had to check my lipstick because I had to get me a bite of batter. Boy, this stuff is so good. And that much cinnamon in there is just a hint and it just makes it so delicious. We're going to bake this at 325 degrees for about 40 minutes until it sets up and it's um, all it's cooked all the way even in the center. And then we're gonna make a yummy chocolate icing to go on top of it. We'll see y'all in a few minutes after it bakes. Let's get it in the oven. All right, we're gonna mix up our icing. It is super simple as well. You are supposed to melt the butter. I don't tell you that on here. And I should, this is on page 88 of our second cookbook. All right, we're gonna start out with four cups of powdered sugar and we're gonna add some cocoa. I wanna put in about three tablespoons of cocoa. Okay, we're gonna be using some evaporated milk. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. And in our powdered sugar and cocoa, I think I'll just go ahead and mix it up just a little bit. Now you're gonna pour in 
a stick of butter melted. Mine's not quite all the way melted, but it'll be just fine because it's almost there. You're going to add some vanilla. And I'm going to use six tablespoons of this evaporated milk. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll do it. That's all there is to it, y'all. And now we're going to mix it up. One thing I do like about this little electric mixer I use is it does have a very low speed, which is wonderful when you're using powdered sugar and flour to keep it from going all over the place. Uh, a lot of these mixers today don't have a low speed and even my Bosch, in my opinion, the low speed is not low enough. But look how nice and low this one is. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add a half cup of chopped pecans to our icing. All right, I'll see y'all in a few minutes when we ice our delicious cake. I'm gonna take a bite of this and see how it is. So yummy. Smells so good in here and it is ready to get out of the oven. You can really tell when a cake's done because it starts to pull away from the sides of the pan. Boy, don't that look good? But it's gonna be good and moist too. Me and Chris are both smelling it and we want a piece. And I'm only gonna have a little tiny piece today, but I'm still gonna try it for sure. Now you can freeze cake always. So keep that in mind. Um, or you can have a recipe as well. There's nothing wrong with using a half recipe. Now my cake is still warm. that look good got a little extra over here not enough right here so we're just gonna swirl it a little bit cut us a piece and you can swirl it the opposite way if you want to yum I'm going to use my brownie spatula to cut this first piece and you know it's hot so it's really super moist. This cake is one of our family favorites and I like to make it for Christmas. The kids love it. My aunt always made the Texas sheet cake so I remember looking forward to it every year on the holiday table. Let's give it a try, y'all. Super moist. See how moist it is? It's just absolutely delicious. It's still warm, so let's just take a bite. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> You just cannot find a better chocolate cake recipe anywhere, y'all. Give this one a try over all my chocolate cakes, and you're bound to make it again and again. Texas sheet cake or Mama's Coca-Cola cake. Why not put them together and make the best cake ever? Thanks so much for watching Colored Valley Cuts, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya. Showed you how to cook it up like mama used to do. So go.